and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Witchfinder General. <laughs> it is a German chocolate Rogan beer. Today we are going to be featuring 1973's Lamora, A Child's Tale of the Supernatural. This movie was written and directed by Richard Blackburn. He didn't do much, but he did direct an episode of uh, Tales from the Dark Side. He was also the voice of Dr. Zaius in the TV <laughs> show for Planet of the Apes. It was weird. Like, what a weird fucking resume the guy has. Dr. Zaius, Dr. Zaius, do, 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 Dr. Zaius, Dr. Zaius. The movie stars Cheryl Smith. Leslie Taplin is in this. And High Pike is in this. He was in Blade Runner, the movie Vamp, and Dolomite. <laughs> Lamora starts off with a couple of people in bed getting it on a little yeah, bit yeah. and all of a sudden boom the door kicks open boom boom somebody has a rifle and just blows this couple away he gets into his car and he takes off <laughs> rightfully so have yeah. you just blown a couple people away breaks down almost yeah. in, in front of like this house there's this woman and all of a sudden he gets attacked by all these people in cloaks it cuts to the main lead of the movie lila lee she's in church and she's singing a religious hymn lila lee is the daughter of this guy who blew those two people away in bed. Kind of this well-known gangster. The reverend of the church has taken Lila Lee in. She gets a letter from this woman named Lamora saying that her dad is staying with her and that he's taken ill. And he wants to basically make amends with her and say goodbye. And she goes up to a couple people to ask for a ride to like the bus station and uh, they don't want anything to do with it. She ends up sneaking into the car in the back seat. They're kind of talking about her. Don't you know what she's doing with that reverend? Yeah. There's, yeah. you know, everybody's talking about it. While well, she's in town, there's mm, all these weird, all these weird people. people and everything. and. These people staring at her as she's walking by and walks past the <laughs> bar and some guys all slap. This I'll teach you to fool around with my friends. Yeah. And even the guy at the ticket booth is fucking weird too. Well, you want a chocolate? Everyone's making these weird advances at her. Yeah, fucking yeah. Weird. Lo and behold, the bus driver's <laughs> fucking weird too. <laughs> she's the only one on the bus too, right? Yeah. And it's nighttime and it's creepy as hell. So they start driving through the countryside side <laughs> all these people started to show up in the woods they got a weird stare to them they call it the Astaroth's look. So all of a sudden the bus starts to break down and all of a sudden he gets swarmed by all these weird monster looking people. <laughs> yeah. These monsters get attacked by other normal looking people, like in cloaks, right? In or, cloaks. Yeah. She wakes up in this weird hut. There's this old lady that comes into this hut. <laughs> She's so fucking creepy. Dancing around her in this weird fairy tale type song. <laughs> what the fuck is up with this <laughs> shit? This weird country shit going on she trips the old woman <laughs> Whoa! when the old woman comes in to give her food and she runs and she escapes and she hides underneath the house and she listens gets caught by Lamora. She's like introduced to those children. Reaching for her through the bars of the stairs. These and weird fingernails. And yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> laughing again too with that weird laugh. Lamora takes Lila and, and actually bathes her. Sees something kind of like behind this mirror and it's this weird creature <laughs> thing. <laughs> and it's like her dad. He attacks her and Lamora takes his torch and like drives him out and he jumps through like this window and yeah it's, it's crazy. crazy our people have turned ugly and animal like yeah but it's not gonna happen to you after the ceremony you'll be fine and then she looks out her bedroom window and sees another child being dragged screaming yeah. into this yeah. hut this is too fucked up and decides <laughs> to escape and she gets out of her room and sees Lamora with this kid. That same kid goes down and, and bites the child's neck. Lila screams, Lamora looks up. So Lamora rounds up these cloaked figures we saw earlier and they go and chase down Lila as she's on the run. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're gonna end the plot point for Lamora. <laughs> A child's tale of the supernatural. If you wanna see what happens, hunt down the movie and, and watch it, cause it's 
quite a trip. Yeah, that's for sure. A 70s trip. One of the best things about this movie is the atmosphere. It is yeah. so atmospheric. It's so heavy. You could yeah. cut it with a knife, for it, God's sake. It's so dreamy and, and fairy tale like yeah. And it's so raw, too, this movie. Even though it does have that fairy tale-like quality to it, it feels realistic. Yeah. Even so, right? Yeah. It's interesting how they managed to do that. That's not easy. No, it's got that raw, low-budget, mm -hmm. Texas Chainsaw Massacre type vibe to it, but yeah. like a dreamy fairy tale version. They managed to do a fantastic job of all those night shots, too. But that Light, makes lighting it really yeah. like heavy with the blue. Yeah, with blue light. And that helps with the fairy tale like aspect quality, of it. right? Yeah unique quality to it that I haven't really seen in a movie before or since. You can tell that R Richard Blackburn had like a clear vision yeah. of exactly yeah. what he knew he was doing. Yeah. Right? And you can tell he had to pull it off with a budget. But the movie starts off with a fucking bang, right? It starts <laughs> off with a boom, boom. And it's like jarring and yeah. it looks fucking visceral and like holy shit. And then you see those monsters in the forest, and they look really good, too. Like, everything looks good in this movie. Bus driver's yeah. all weird. It's like, is he, like, almost a monster yeah. or something? You or think what? he is. It's... You think he's part of everything. You think that he is, like, working for Lamora. But, no, he's just a weird guy who <laughs> happens to fucking get killed on the way, you know? <laughs> it's fast-paced to kind of keep you entertained. Yeah. But it slows down to where they need to to explain the story and to yeah. kind of keep you captivated, right? Yeah. They just feed you little bits. There's there's points in this movie, like, there's long periods where there's no dialogue. Not once are you bored. Yeah. You're just, like, mesmerized by these visuals and, like, whoa, I don't care that there's no dialogue or no explanation. I just want to keep watching to see how this is going to unravel, yeah. you know? It's intriguing. The whole movie is one big metaphor. Yeah. And for what, I guess, it can be up to debate because it's 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 not glaring. It's not like force-fed to you on a silver platter. Oh, no. Like, this is what the movie means. You really have to, like, go to bed that night thinking about it and you're gonna probably wake up the next day like mm, yeah what does that movie mean what is it trying to say because it's obviously trying to say something exactly yeah i think the fact that it's a child's tale of the supernatural yeah. is sa says it all the whole movie is from lila lee's perspective right right you don't see anything that she doesn't see exactly she's a child so everything on the outside of that is strange yeah. and new. Yeah, and weird and, and dreamy. Weird. Yeah. Which is why it's probably filmed the way it is, because oh that's you're seeing it through a child's eyes. Frightened child's eyes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and everybody's weird and making advances on her. This movie really deals with the fact that there is no good or evil. It's all It's all bad. It's all bad. Yeah. No matter what, no matter where Lila turns, she's being corrupted by something. Yeah. Either by the Reverend, you know, Lamora seems I was like, okay, well, she's going to liberate me from this man who might take advantage of me. But, but Lamora is just using you, too. Yep, she's just for her own gains, right? So no matter what, this poor child is being used by somebody. Exactly. There's no escaping. At some point, a child's going to be corrupted. And I think that's what this movie is. It's, exactly. it's going to happen at some point. It's going to be the Reverend. It's going to be Lamora. Something's going to happen where it's like you're no longer innocent. The fact that Lamora's people... Yeah. are turning into monsters yep. shows that I don't think there's any escaping it. Right? All, all people turn into monsters every, at some point. At some point in, yeah. in their life. Yeah. right? And it also mirrors the real world too because for the most part the real world is quite dark. It, yeah. It's not it's not all you know bubblegum and fairy tales. This movie I think is horror at its core. Because it, core, yeah. it is a nightmare. <laughs> what scares people? Their nightmares mm -hmm. is what scares them, Their right? dreams. So if you want a good trip through a child's nightmare, definitely watch Lamora. The Child's Tale of the Supernatural. Yeah. It has a very raw feel like children shouldn't play with dead things. Yeah. Um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, right? that, that shoestring budget, but lightning in a bottle yeah, at the same it, time, right? It really hits the mark. Yeah. And it hits it heavy. I think it takes two watches to really get everything, and you definitely, I think, need to be drinking while you're watching <laughs> it. Yeah. So until next time, keep drinking.